Hmm. Where do I start? Do I like the six thinking hats? Actually, what are the six thinking hats? Who made them? Do they actually work? What are the things that might go wrong? Are they fun to use? If they are, that'd be cool. Um, do they align with a biblical perspective? Yeah, we're meant to think about that. Um, ooh, what if I used them like that? That would be cool. But would that really work? I don't know. Um, that's one of the good things I would... Yeah, that would be cool. Like, really cool. This is just making me tired thinking about it. Okay, okay, just stop. You're all over the place. Let's start this again, because right now you're trying to think of everything at once. And that's not how the six thinking hats work. Let's start from the beginning and use the six thinking hats as a guide to help us through this podcast. Edward de Bono's six thinking hats thought strategy is a useful tool for any teacher wanting to promote the thinking ability of students in their classroom. This forecast will look at the strategy using the thinking hats method itself as a guide. It will also look at a proposed addition to the six thinking hats, the purple hat. Edward de Bono, born 1933, is considered a leading authority on creative thought, problem solving, and strategic leadership. Edward de Bono holds several degrees, including an honours degree in psychology and physiology, a PhD from Cambridge, and an MD from the University of Malta. In 1985, Edward de Bono published a book called Six Thinking Hats. This book outlined a thinking strategy modelled around the idea of the thinking hat. Within this model, there are six hats. Each hat is a different colour and represents a different mode of thought. The first hat is the blue hat. The blue hat is responsible for keeping order and setting the focus of the other hats. It is also responsible for conclusions, summaries and overviews. The second hat is the white hat. The white hat deals solely with facts, information and data. It presents the information without any judgments or biases. Third is the red hat. This hat is governed by emotions and instincts. It asks questions like, how does this make me feel, or how will this make other people feel? It also allows the wearer to share their initial reactions without any need for explanation or apology. Fourth is the yellow hat. This hat looks at the benefits of a matter. Its main purpose is to look for reasons why something will work, and it always has a positive attitude towards the problem. Fifth is the black hat. This hat looks for reasons why something will not work. The black hat is logical, critical, and cautious. This is the hat that deals with risk assessments and looks for inconsistencies or faults within a plan. The last hat presented in Edward de Bono's thinking hat strategy is the green hat. The green hat searches for new ways to do things. It does not need to have a logical base for its ideas, and if used after the black hat, will look at ways to overcome the problems presented by the use of that hat. Based on first impressions, the six thinking hat strategy proposed by Edward de Bono appears to be a fun, creative, and practical tool which could be applied in nearly any setting. It appears to give a good model for engaging in reflection and creative thought. There are many benefits to using the six thinking hats as a teaching tool. Firstly, it helps to focus those who are using it by letting them think about one aspect of an idea at a time, instead of having to think about all of them at once. It also makes sure every aspect of an issue has been covered before the end of a discussion. Using the six thinking hats will make sure that the participants are not simply retelling their default opinions and preconceptions on a topic. It prompts them to look at the matter from all different angles and encourages them to investigate new ideas. This model can be extremely helpful for teachers in the classroom. Teachers can use it as a model for scaffolding discussions both for the whole class and for use during group work. It can also lead students in their own personal inquiries about a topic. Seeing as the thinking hat model works for both concrete and abstract levels of thought, it can be used for both primary and secondary students. There are, however, some potential problems that may arise from using the thinking hat system. One of these problems is that the thinking hats are meant to break people free from their original patterns of thought. But in doing so, it creates new patterns of thought, which could, in turn, become just as constraining as the person's original thought patterns. According to Edward de Bono, formal training is required to know how to use the thinking hats model properly. If this is the case, then it is wise to be wary of improper use of the model, especially when you are first introducing it to a group of people. One more area in which the thinking hat model also falls short is its lack of a firm basis for the positive and negative judgments that are a part of the strategy's process. In other words, there is no moral basis for right or wrong within de Bono's model. At this point, it is the job of the green hat to look at the different ways of viewing or implementing the thinking hat strategy, especially in relation to the problems raised by the black hat. This podcast will focus on one of those issues. 
namely that the thinking hat strategy overlooks any sort of biblical or philosophical worldview. One way to overcome the lack of a solid basis for judgments and reasoning in Edward de Bono's model would be to include another thinking hat which examines a matter in the light of a person's worldview. For Christians, this would mean looking at a matter to see if it lines up with biblical values and principles. Beverly Christian has designed a hat to fulfill this role. She calls it the purple hat. The purple hat is the hat of discernment or ethical judgment. It asks, how does this idea fit with my understanding of the world? The purple hat was created with a biblical worldview in mind. So, how does the six thinking hat strategy fit into a biblical worldview? How does Edward de Bono view the individual? Edward de Bono sees every individual as having the capacity to be creative. Is this true from a biblical perspective? Well, the Bible speaks about how we are created in God's image. So, if this is true, then we need to find out whether God is creative. The first five words of the Bible reveal the answer to this question. In the beginning, God created. This plainly speaks of God's creative nature. The next thing to look at is the way de Bono views the way we think and whether it lines up with what the Bible says. De Bono describes thought as being a self-organizing information system operated by nerve networks in the brain. He introduces a type of thought known as lateral thinking. He describes it as thinking in a way that breaks us free from our normal thought patterns or moves across those thought patterns and goes beyond them. So, how does this view of thought line up with a biblical worldview? Proverbs 22 verse 6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old he will not depart from it. This seems to line up with de Bono's view that our brain organizes itself into thought patterns which it then continues to follow. So in some ways this view of thinking does line up with the Bible. What then about lateral thinking? An interesting view of lateral thought is described by Pastor Sonny Holmes. To him, lateral thinking is thinking through God's eyes, rather than simply using a model of thought to break us free from our preconceived ideas. Holmes' view of lateral thinking aligns with a biblical worldview better than de Bono's description because it acknowledges that God is the one who renews and expands our minds. Now it is time for another green hat thinking moment. This time the green hat will look at a few different ways the thinking hats model could be implemented in the secondary years classroom. It will use the analysis of a novel as an example for how the thinking hats could be used. Oftentimes, when students are asked to think about a piece of literature, whether that's a poem or a novel, they have very little idea on where to start. However, if students are introduced to the six thinking hats model, they will have a starting point. For example, in the analysis of a novel, the white hat would be used to gain a general understanding of that novel. Who are the characters? Where did it all take place? And what was the plot? The red hat would be used to get as many initial responses from the students as possible. It could also be used to examine the emotions of the characters in the story. The yellow hat would look at the positive aspects of the story. What parts of the story made it interesting and what parts did the students enjoy most about it? The black hat would then look at the negative aspects of the story. What parts of the novel were not as good as the rest? And what caused the negative events in the novel to happen? When using the green hat, students could try to solve any unresolved problems which the characters in the novel face. You could also get students to come up with alternative endings, titles, or even a sequel to the novel. The green hat might also try to find a greater meaning in the novel than it just being simply a story. The purple hat will look at the values portrayed within the novel. It will question decisions made by the characters to see whether or not they are aligned with a biblical perspective of the world. Finally, the blue hat would be responsible for asking how the novel might fit into an area, say English literature in the 19th century, and whether or not it is a good example of that type of literature. The blue hat would also summarize the ideas presented by the other hats and look at the novel as a whole. The Six Thinking Hats model is a brilliant teaching tool for organizing group discussions and thought processes. It can be used in a variety of circumstances. Schools and businesses all around the world use it as a model for generating new ideas and organizing discussions. The Six Thinking Hats model gives a new meaning to the phrase, put on your thinking hat.